scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Colin, I know you are on your way going, but can you sing me that song one more time? We want to see your face. Just for one minute and then we'll get to the word. Lift your hands, wave it to Jesus. We want to see you here. We want to see you now. We want to see you face to face. Oh God, surrounded by your glory. Feasting at your table We want to see you face to face Oh God, come on everybody We want, we want to see you here We want to see you now We want to see your face Face to face Oh Surrounded by your glory, feasting at your table. We want to see you face to face. We want to see you here. We want to see you now. We want to see your face. Father, once again, we pray that you will help us this morning. We have come to learn. We have come to grow. We declare that our hearts are open to hear your word. Speak to us this morning. And our lives will never be the same. Amen. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you so very much. I have a very short exhortation this morning and they are my final words in this season to the church in South Africa. This is not a message for House of Treasures alone. This is not even a message for South Africa alone. This is a message for Africa and this is a message world over for as many continents and as many individuals who want to remain relevant as far as the program of God is concerned. We have been examining the next move of God. And tonight, I just want to, by way of conclusion, teach you how to preserve the move of God. Our world is full of moves of God, revivals, awakenings, and you find moments in history, nationally, internationally, where people experience the fire of God 
and then at a point in time you find out that everything just goes down churches are filled with people during the moves of God cities experience transformation nations experience development and then a time seems to come when they're they will now plunge back to decadence and so on and so forth and I'm a student of revival myself I have studied the moves of God from scripture I have studied the moves of God as as much as I can find in any and every continent in a bit to understand why revivals die why they fail why they cease to last and I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few of these revivalists in their lifetime it's an honor that God gave me to listen to them what did God tell you what did you do right where did you miss it the Bible says the things that are written aforetime they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of Scripture might find hope are we learning this morning the first thing I want to tell you is that kingdom advancement is territorial the advancement of the kingdom is territorial that means that God desires that his kingdom be advanced but there is a territorial component to it that means that if South Africa does well advancing the kingdom of God Malawi Nigeria Africa as a continent Europe America then the whole earth indeed would experience the reality on the life of the life and the power of God but if a territory fails to advance the kingdom it does not matter what else another territory is doing with time the inability of that territory to press towards God will affect those who are on fire are we together now yes one song from one territory can become the instrument of revival in another territory one message from one territory can become the instrument of revival in another territory territories are spiritually interconnected that means if one territory is excelling spiritually and another territory is going down the devil will ship somewhere he will ship something from that cold territory that will destroy the fire every revival died because someone came with an idea and a philosophy from a territory that was antichrist and he doused the fire in the territory where the fire was burning so it matters this was the mistake that Esther wanted to make she seemed safe because she was in the palace while her man was plotting against the Jews and Mordecai gave her a counsel he said don't you think that you are safe forever you are only safe for a season if you don't use your influence to advocate our freedom when he's done with you he will come back when he's done with us he will come to the palace and fish you and Esther said no I will use this opportunity now and go to the king even though uninvited and if I perish I perish her insistence was what brought to not the plot of Haman kingdom advancement is territorial and all territories are spiritually interconnected this is true there are a few keys that I have learned the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 13 let's hurry up just an exhortation Philippians chapter 2 from verse 13 to 16 here's what it says Philippians chapter 2 from verse 13 it says for it is God which walketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure uh-huh it says do all things without murmuring or disputing that ye may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world last verse 
holding forth the word of life that ye may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. He says there is a mandate upon us that in the midst of a wicked and a perverse generation that we are mandated to hold that light and to shine it forth so that everyone would see. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, we've discussed this a bit in previous sessions. Jesus now, Jesus began a discourse with the disciples when he resurrected from the dead. The Bible says he was with them 40 days teaching them on the matters of the kingdom. And they thought he was going to restore the nation of Israel. And they asked him a question. They said, will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? He said, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has put within his care. Verse 8 now says, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and that power will make you witnesses, validators of my claim. And now he creates a territorial component to that assignment. You will be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Our mandate, listen to me, our mandate as far as preserving the move of God is to ensure that God and his purposes remain alive within a territory transgenerationally. Let me repeat that. We have a corporate mandate as the church in any territory to ensure and insist that God and his purposes remain alive, not just within our lifetime but transgenerationally south africa hear me that means if christ tarries a time should never come in this nation where the subject of god becomes obsolete you have an assignment to preserve god and his purposes transgenerationally now i know people are following from all over the world but respectfully speaking across europe across many parts of the west today spirituality has plunged into an unfortunate dimension and let me tell you what happened in the 60s and the 70s please pay attention when great generals those who call god's generals these mighty men of god were were trailing that entire environment with the fire of revival there was a mistake that they made that we should not make africa please listen to me they made a mistake they ignored the generation after them they were focused on blessing people they were on crusade grounds healing the sick raising the dead but they left their little toddlers who are now the leaders remember that was the strategy that the spirit of the antichrist was trying to birth in egypt he said we will allow you go but leave your wives and children moses said no way all of us will go our future will go with us our support systems will also go with us let me tell you this when the devil tries to stop the move of god in the lifetime of a man when he finds out you have an unbending covenant with god and you will not change the next strategy is to distract you so that you are so focused in the work that you forget that one day you will not be here many of them ignored their children and so the antichrist said you know what Give up on this prayer warrior woman, she will never backslide. Give up on this evangelist, she will never go down. But let us go back and pay the price for the next 30 years growing with their children. Now the Antichrist grew with the children. Now you call the name of Jesus, they tell you nonsense. I didn't grow with that name. Why are you now introducing it in my adulthood? The Bible says train up a child not train up an adult he knows why he says train a child it is difficult to train an adult preserving the move of god pay attention is a mistake now we honor the west don't get me wrong we we remain indebted to them for the dimension of god and the christian faith that they so lavishly brought to us however we are learning from that mistake 
are you aware that the average teenager right now i don't know how it is in south africa but the average teenager completely ignores and hates anything that has to do with god they love it they love apps but you mention god and it's as though you are mentioning a typewriter they say get out of my way i'm not interested in all this nonsense it's a subliminal programming the bible says there arose another pharaoh that did not know joseph so south africa my final word to the body of christ in this territory in this season is that i want to teach you and give you six keys that the lord gave me very quickly if you hold on to these keys i give you an assurance by the god of heaven that hundred years from now jesus will still be lifted in this territory you see quality control systemic quality control is the key to preserving the consistency of products in business we teach that is that true yes there's an apple drink that i love organic wonderful apple drink i think it's from the u.s and most times when i take it they started in i think 1886 that was where they started the company 1886 and they are still working today they have they have done well to maintain the quality do you know why because they created a systemic nature of quality control that does not depend on the individual man in it we must create such a system in south africa question is there a system to make sure sinners are saved like i taught you is there a system to make sure the saved are transformed is there a system to make sure the transformed are empowered is there a system to make sure the empowered are preserved through character and humility if you lose that formation you have lost it let's do a one minute recap over what i taught yesterday the greatest need of a non-believer come on talk to me intelligent people the greatest need of a non-believer the greatest need of a new believer transformation the greatest need of a transformed believer empowerment the greatest need of an empowered believer character and humility and when you are there you recycle it back again back to jesus again it starts and ends with him if you don't find jesus at the end of your pursuit you are missing it somewhere you should find him at the beginning and at the end he brings you back the beginning and the end are we together six keys i have studied this in the life of territories where godliness has been preserved transgenerationally let me give you the keys very quickly are you ready number one for the move of god to be preserved in south africa you must ensure that the priesthood ministry of prayer never goes down write it down please the priesthood ministry of prayer notice prayer does many things and prayer was allocated to achieve many things the primary purpose of prayer is not just to receive things the primary purpose of prayer is for your transformation there is a dimension of prayer that is for receiving petitions there is a dimension of prayer that is for warfare and intercession please hear me if you lose the priesthood ministry of prayer at a territorial scale i assure you the power of darkness will ravage the land and destroy anything god in the land of babylon there was only one request one request that because of the prayer of daniel the spirits of the medis and the persians could not penetrate to thwart the purposes of god and so satan walked through the members of parliament to pass just one law you would think they were just discussing it was about attacking the priesthood of prayer and they came up with a proposal let there be no prayer in the whole land of babylon for just 30 days that's only that's how short satan needs a land without prayer to wreak havoc 30 days 
without priests who can pray. The priesthood ministry of prayer. The fire upon your altar, South Africa, must not go down. Please hear me. Prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is for men. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. If you do not pray, you cannot authorize the hand of God to rest upon a land and birth his purposes. You have to understand the rules of engagement. God is almighty, but he, the earth has he given to the sons of men. The Bible tells us clearly that the whole world lies in wickedness. It is no news that the devil will want to wreck any family, any industry, any business, any church, if allowed. Are we blessed? Listen, you must never stop initiating prayer chains. You must never stop initiating prayer groups. There are some of you who God has anointed to be intercessors. Men and women, now is the time to put on your priestly regalia. A destiny is at stake. A generation is at stake. Oh, awake wailing women. Awake men and women who know how to hold on to the four horns of the altar. Preserve the next hundred years of South Africa now. Are we together? It says, give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem as a praise. Everything that happens physically is something that has been concluded in the realm of the spirit. The book of Job teaches us that. Nothing just happens. The ministry of prayer. Churches pray pastors pray don't just preach pray 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 and fast pray not pray alone pray and fast south africa pray and fast these are the irrefutable keys that control the move of god the keys that control revival prayer and fasting it will never change it has never changed pray in the morning pray in the afternoon pray in the evening pray all across south africa let every home become a house of prayer pray with your children pray with your husband pray with your wife pray with your workers businesses pray companies pray industries pray members of parliament pray Listen to me. I charge every father here. You are not just a father because you provide bread. You are a father if you lead prayers. Not just participate in the prayers. Lead it. Show your children how to be a spiritual man. Listen. I look forward to times in South Africa where a family may be it's night time and they've gone to bed and they hear the voice of their father as the priest of the house from the living room to the kitchen and you open the door and lay hands on your children when they wake up you say no sleep I'm performing my priestly duty you sleep I'm awake for you let me see the devil that comes to destroy your children when you are a man of prayer let me see the devil that comes to destroy your business when you are a man of prayer instead of complaining pray instead of complaining pray the same energy it takes to complain is the same energy it takes to pray can i tell you this an attack on your prayer life is a real attack let me repeat south africa an attack on your prayer life is a real attack. Don't give excuses and say, I am busy. When you are sick and down, everything you are trying to do, you will not be able to do again. Don't let the devil destroy your territory. Let him know there are priests in South Africa. 
fortify the spiritual borders of your territory be the watchman on the wall stand he says i have set watchmen every pastor here you must get to a time where you lock the church and you are the only one there i'm hear what i'm telling you i'm teaching you secrets in the kingdom lock your church and be the only one there no usher no protocol just you and god lord for your glory lord for your purposes can i tell you this if you give your children a good degree and you don't give them god and transfer priesthood you did not complete your investment in them don't just give them education give them spirituality don't just give them education give them spirituality the priesthood ministry of prayer we got into this work by prayer we have been preserved by prayer please hear me if you do not fast you will remain weak the good old school art of fasting has been the key to strength and stamina in the spirit this kind goeth out not but by prayer and fasting there are issues that you need to confront with prayers and fasting fasting does not kill turn that plate upside down and come before god please sit down this is supposed to be a charge <laughs> preserving the move of god pastors let me give you an advice be careful with the deception of being busy in ministry be careful when sometimes when the devil wants to destroy you he will allow so many invitations to come into your life there is a skill to honoring so many invitations and still remaining on fire i am busy and busy has destroyed many people you must learn to wake up in the night use your nights when people are asleep and there's no distraction you wake up you are hearing a report in your job that is not pleasing carry your cv and drop it on the ground someone tells you in the office over my dead body for you to rise don't fight him go back to your control room hear me james 5 15 please let's hurry up we came to church this morning james chapter 5 and verse 15. Hmm. <laughs> james 5 verse 13 i meant to say 13. please read one to read is any among you afflicted what is the cure let him pray The moment you find out that there is any form of affliction your first port of call is not to discuss and call people who cannot help you there is a control room that we have the advantage of priesthood you can manipulate realities to be consistent with the word of god when you know to pray how do you think we rise in this kingdom in the midst of wickedness how do you think we rise how are you going to call partners to your ministry dear man of god it won't be by giving invitations right from where you are your kingdom come your will be done and right now i pray those who have been called into the ministry of prophetic intercession i stretch my hands over you may that grace come upon you right now may that grace come upon you deborah's arise elijah's arise men and women of power some of you from this conference you will start prayer groups prayer chains prayer chains across territories in the name of jesus christ listen to me you are in ministry here please sit down 
you are in ministry let me give you an advice there are two departments you should supervise yourself number one is your worship team your worship team you must put an eye on them by yourself because when the ministry of psalmistry dies in your ministry you are in trouble number two the prayer department every man of god must be a member of his prayer department whether you have the time to physically be there or not you must connect in the spirit pray for me pray for me will make you a weak man you want to preserve listen let me tell you this apostle felix jesus is teaching and here's what he said he said when a spirit leaves a man listen carefully that that spirit goes through dry regions is it in your bible and he said seeking for a place of refuge he will find none and he will say i will go back he's still calling that man my house I will go back to my house and he finds the house swept clean but empty now look up let me share with you a mystery the demon did not just leave the man by default it was casted out by an agency of God's power is that true but it goes to the wilderness where there is no prayer warrior and no one to cast it and yet it is uncomfortable there what makes it uncomfortable I found out that the desert is very hot the heat there in the desert can make that demon uncomfortable and without any man casting it it will leave the desert and choose to come back to you that means if your body can become like that desert if that fire that burns within you if that fire that is in that temple can burn like the desert every spirit every cause every charm every yoke every spell we let you go please sit down jesus said my house shall be called the house of prayer that house is not just a building you are that temple that house if you are not the house of prayer you will become a den of robbers so satan will come to that house which is you since you are not a house of prayer he will steal your joy he will steal your faith he will steal everything he can steal number two what is the second key that will preserve the move of god in south africa in africa and across the globe are you ready the second key the regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained equipped and empowered the regular convergence you want to preserve the move of God there must be a regular convergence of believers within a territory for the purpose of training the purpose of equipping the purpose of being empowered this is why coming to church is very important there must be a regular convergence listen to me when satan wants is the purposes of god to be thwarted something happens with the convergence of believers the regular convergence of believers there must never be an end to conferences services weekly meetings apostolic and prophetic platforms that bring believers together because it is God's authorized platform to train to equip and to empower please hear what I'm telling you that means when believers begin to have the laxity to go to the house of God it's not an attack on those believers it's an attack on the territory you are only receiving what you are receiving because you are converged right now in a Sunday service can I tell you this I beckon on you by the mercies of God train your children to love the house of God train your children to love the house of God train your children to serve in the house of God train your children to be genuinely connected to the house of God 
I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God, David said. There must be a regular convergence of believers. When the gathering of the saints is affected indefinitely across any territory, do you know, respectfully speaking, I know that world over, there was a lockdown last year especially. Do you know how many believers' spiritual lives went down? Come on now. Just within a span of three months. Now, of course, I know that the, the government and the nations did their best to manage, but I'm saying that such a situation where at a global scale, almost every nation was on lockdown for three months. People returned back to their vomits. People who pastors were laboring to manage to stand strong, had a license to go back. People's prayer lives went down. People left God. The devil used the opportunity to attack those he had been trying to attack who were under prophetic coverings for a long time. By the time the lockdown was over, there were too many casualties already. The house of God is a place of inspiration. The house of God is a place where you will learn the word. The house of God is where you encounter the God of heaven. The house of God is God's authorized institution to mentor and build believers to become like God. Psalm 133 says, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It says it's like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron down to his bird, down to his skirt. It says, For there the Lord had commanded the blessing. There must be a regular convergence. That means you must pray that anywhere in South Africa where there are no churches and meeting places that call upon the name of the Lord, you must pray that God will send laborers there. Amen. The unreached must be reached. Yes, there is always an apostle among the unreached. There is always a prophet among the unreached. There is always a kingdom financier among the unreached. You must give them a chance to know God. Number three. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. Hello. See you on our next video. Scriptures exalt us from the book of Proverbs. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kate bashka na kata branda kete kato. Kete branda kata bako tosko to prega kete kete kata. As you listen to this message, the face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.